one of the most striking things that you're likely to see on the CES show floor, the Hyundai SA1. Now, this is an air taxi that Hyundai is developing uh, with, the, with Uber. Um, uh, this vehicle seats five. Um, that thing is huge. It is huge. It's got a cruising altitude of about one to 2,000 feet and a top speed of about 200 miles per hour. Uh, it's got a 60-mile range, which is pretty standard for electric aircraft at this point. Um, and Hyundai is aiming to recharge these beasts in just five to seven minutes. I would love to know how they're going to get that done. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't even supercharge a Tesla in five to seven minutes. It takes half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if one giant flying machine isn't enough for you, uh, there's also the Bell Nexus 4EX, which seats four to five passengers. Um, and this thing is also just massive. We saw this at last year at CES, the Bell Nexus. Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, this is an updated version that has an all electric uh, option, which is brand new. Uh, it can go 60 miles uh, with the all electric version. And then a hybrid electric version can go, I think, 160 miles. A little, over, 160 a little miles. over double. OK. Yes. So here's my question. I want to talk about these things where we talk about what's next. Because I don't know if any of you have heard a drone. Uh, they're loud. And they are about this big. So what? Is this going to sound like in the sky if they're running these, let's say in Los Angeles, we're both from LA, yep. and they're running this from Union Station to LAX. How are they going to mitigate the noise? Also, people in LA are notoriously bad at driving, much less flying, Jesse. What do you think? You're the expert here. Well, I think what do you think is going to happen? I think a lot of these are going to be autonomous because you don't want to deal with everybody having one having to get a pilot's license. Um, and as far as the noise is concerned, that's, that's definitely a concern. And it, it's hard to know until you hear these things in the sky. Um, so uh, I think that there's going to be a, it's, they're a regulatory nightmare because of, uh, you know, noise and safety issues. Sure. We um, can't even get, you know, self-driving cars on the road in California because of legal issues and, you know, testing. And we have to have all these other you know, regulatory hurdles that have to be cleared, and the public has to trust it, which is another thing. I mean, sometimes uh, planes crash, sometimes cars crash, sometimes vehicles just crash. And so uh, I, I was very intrigued by the idea that the SA-1, Hyundai's SA-1, has a parachute system. Yes, it's got redundancy so that if uh, one system goes out, the other system can carry the full load of the, the vehicle. That's why it has so many propellers, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, that's my understanding. Um, and, and the parachute system is like a worst case scenario that it can bring it down gently. Um, NASA is also helping regulate these flying aircrafts. They're building an aircraft of their own, the X-57 Maxwell, um, so that they can understand this electric aircraft technology. And they are also uh, putting on an an urban air mobility ch grand challenge where as these vehicles become ready, uh, they, c they can use NASA as like a testing space uh, to get these vehicles ready uh, for the public. Okay, so my question here is, would you ride in one of these? I'm would a you, nervous- Would you ride one like from your local transportation station to our office? So I am a nervous flyer on a regular <laughs> aircraft. <laughs> Uh, and I'm what you call a late adopter. You know, there's a lot of early adopters here at CES. I like, you know, I'm a late adopter. I'll, I'll, I'll be you're one gonna, of the last you're ones. You're going to watch it at a distance and maybe give it a try yes. after a, a, a hundred thousand of the flights have been completed without any issue. Yes, uh, that's, that's my plan at least. Um, another uh, WTF technology that caught my eye was uh, Intel's volumetric video presentation. Um, this was weird. It was. It, it wasn't the flashiest presentation at CES, um, but from a filmmaking perspective, this could really change how we view all sorts of video I think content. we might fight about this. Okay, explain what this is to everybody, and then we're going to talk about the potential and also the possible kind of negative aspects of this. Yes. So uh, Intel filmed this football game from multiple different angles and then used computer processing to assemble a 3D volumetric video of the game. So what you're seeing is actually a camera that doesn't exist. Um, it, uh, you c so as the viewer, you could put 
a camera anywhere you want because they have a volumetric image, a 3D volumetric image of the game. So imagine... It's a, it's a little bit like... Um you know those shots of the Matrix where they did cameras all the way around a person and then they were able to sort of like, you could see, I mean, the, the filmmakers chose what you could see, but it's like, because they were on a, a track, but it gave you a 360 degree view and then from that, Intel is able to sort of create and build this, uh, any point of view from any position, uh, build this scene. Yes. Uh, and you notice that, you know, it's not a perfect image, uh, especially when it gets closer to the players. Uh, it gets a little bit of crunchy distortion. Uh, Intel said to get more higher quality images that they are seeking, they would need about six times the processing power that they currently have. So this takes a lot of processing power. But the potential is amazing. Um, in addition to creating a camera that doesn't exist, you could also eventually watch a football game on something called a volumetric display, which we've covered a few times on What the Future. Uh, Voxon Photonics, a company in Australia, in, uh, has invented a couple volumetric displays where you can view a 3D image from any angle without glasses, and, and you'll get a new angle on the thing that you're seeing. Um, and then uh, there's wow. another one, the Interact Lab, that you can actually s hear and feel these 3D images. Is that is that this? This this is Voxon's volumetric display. It's a screen okay. that that vibrates up and down, and uh, there's a, a a light projector that's projecting 2D images, and the screen, your eyes blend it together into oh, a 3D image. Wild. So you can stand from you can see different angles depending on where you're standing. And so one of the things that they had mentioned at Intel was you know with the football game example, they were saying that. Most of the time, you're watching from the, the offense's point of view. And they were saying that you might be able to, for example, I'm sure at some point, you know, NFL Sunday Ticket's going to offer like a defense view where you could get volumetric video from the defense's point of view without having to put a camera above the defense, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Now, okay, so, so sports-wise, that's very exciting. However, how is this going to be applied? You love bad movies. I do. And uh, how is this going to be applied to filmmaking? Because the thing is, is yes, there might be a certain freedom in letting a viewer decide what's, what point of view they'd like to see a scene from, but also does not, do you feel like that might undermine a creator's vision? I think it's just a different creative choice. Like, I, I don't think it's going to ever replace... So maybe like a Bandersnatch, a Netflix Bandersnatch. Yeah, something like that where, you Alternative know... Alternative sort of format. You have a volumetric image of a house and you can, you know, move through the walls to see different scenes, like some sort of, like, immersive theater. Mm, like Hereditary, we should, we should <laughs> do that. Volumetric video for Hereditary, scariest thing ever. Yes. I would not, I would not enjoy that. Yeah. Um, okay, so they were saying they need six times the processing power for this to work. So it's, yes. it's, 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 it's a, a ways away from being something that you're, you're likely to see, but uh, that's what, what the future is all about, uh, trying to anticipate trends into the future. And do you think that AI might help sort of like iron out what's going on with volumetric video? Is this something that like over time they'd be able to gather so much data that uh, you know, artificial intelligence might be able to help that processing, uh, you know, figure out how to kind of smooth everything out, make it look really high quality? I absolutely think so. Um, if, the, if they had some pre-built grass textures, which they probably do from all the Madden games, uh, they, the AI could use that to patch in those, those crunchy God. areas. Or even just importing, you know, player models. Exactly, yeah. If they had models of the players, then you wouldn't get all that crunchiness it's when like you get the close-up. models up. of the players. And yeah. Oh, wow. That's wild. It'd be really um, interesting stuff. Okay. So, so we... Uh, so we have talked about flying drones, passenger drones, in our in our beautiful city of LA. We're gonna we're just at LA in the future. Mm -hmm. So we got our passenger drones. We got uh, Interact Lab uh, doing you know volume. We all this cool video happening. We can watch our football games from any angle. And uh, okay, so now we live in a in a. Uh, this is Interact Lab. You were, this is yes. one of the things you're saying. So this is Interact Lab, um, and this is a, a sound based. Uh, volumetric display where it's actually a bead that sound waves are moving all around and so it can actually the bead can vibrate uh, to certain frequencies and create sounds that you can hear and you can feel in in some way so it almost uh, looks like fabric yeah it's it's really fascinating so uh, with all these volumetric display options coming out and volumetric video being developed I think it's only a matter of time before we see some really interesting uh, new 3d volumetric video content that's really cool
All right, so we've got our flying, we got our flying passenger drones. We've got our crazy POV video from anywhere. What's the what's the most futuristic, futury, future thing that you saw or that with that we're talking about at the show? Well, uh, it was the first thing that caught my eye, eye at CES, which is Toyota's Woven City. Uh, presentation. Uh, Toyota is building a future city where it's going to be a testing ground for new technologies like self-driving cars, AI, uh, there's an underground delivery this. system and it's, uh, it's a nod to Toyota's uh, roots as a fabric company and it's, it's not designed for people to use cars to get around. There's three different roads. Self-driving, self driving and things like that. Pedestrians. It's just a new way of con like building the future, uh, and I, I'm super excited to see how it now shapes Now I'm going to fight you on new way of building the future because I believe Mr. Walt Disney came up with this idea in the 60s when he called it the experimental prototype community city of tomorrow, which is ah. also known as Epcot. Right on. But that's pretty cool. That So this is going to be a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's being built near Mount Fuji. Uh, it's expected to have about 2,000 residents to start. Um, they're going to break can ground next we move year. There? Uh, I don't know if we can. Um, but uh, I, Toyota didn't announce how much it's going to cost. Um, Maybe they'll let us live there for free if we give away our data. Yeah, the da <laughs> definitely going to be gathering a lot of data from this place uh, to, to you know, fine tune all the new technology that's being. Uh, I mean, this is wild. I mean, this is, this is truly. The future. This is a. This is going to end. It's going to be a real tangible thing. It's not just which we've seen at CES before. We've seen these. Oh, look at this beautiful connected 5G city. And here's the idea of how cool it could be if we implement it in LA. And it's like, no, no. Toyota's like, we're <laughs> we're actually going to build a real city, and people are going to live in it, and they're not going to have to drive anywhere because we're going to have self-driving pods, and they're going to maybe live inside little trolley self-driving trolleys that'll get them around. It, it's incredible. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see how it shapes up. I really hope I get to visit it someday. Um, oh, we're going to visit. Yeah. We're going to visit. Let's do it. It, it. You know what? Maybe they'll let us live there for a year. I think that's... That'd be fire. I'm just saying, Toyota, if you need a couple of, if you need a couple of L.A. people to come live in your city, we will do it. 